reporting on other people's reporting, but now we can, for our own team here at Fox News, confirm that Sean Spicer has resigned as White House press secretary. Uh, we are waiting to bring in our own John Roberts, who will bring his reporting with him. Right now, Sandra and I are getting his alert emails as he's uh, learning things. And now, White House correspondent John Roberts is at the White House outside with more on this. John? Hey, Harris, uh, this was really kind of a shock that Sean Spicer resigned. We did know that this was going to provoke a big uh, uh, palace intrigue battle if Anthony Scaramucci, who was a contributor at the Fox Business Network, were to come on board as the communications director. Because the way that the communication shop was going to be structured under Sean Spicer was that he was going to be sort of akin to a deputy chief of staff for communications, so he would be at the head here, and then the communications director would come underneath him, and the press secretary would come underneath him, and they would both report on up the chain to him. But Anthony Scaramucci, who was very close to the president, uh, was very heavily involved in communications during the transition, uh, was a person who did not want to be under a let's say, a deputy chief of staff for communications. He wanted to have a direct line to the president. And we're still waiting for, for absolute confirmation from the White House on all of this. But it's our understanding that uh, Sean Spicer uh, really objected to the idea of Scaramucci being brought in as the communications director and that he tendered his resignation uh, sometime during this meeting that Scaramucci had with the president. We do know that Scaramucci was being brought in at 10 o'clock this morning. We reported this earlier for a meeting because the president wanted him to be the communications director. And the reason why the president wanted him to be the communications director is because he knows that Scaramucci is a fighter. He is a tireless advocate for the president. He really knows how to throw a punch. And that was witnessed just in recent weeks when he went after CNN for what he said was false reporting about ties between one of his former companies and Russian business uh, people. It turned out that that report was not true, and CNN was forced to fire three people who had been at the network for some time for writing that report. So the president likes the way uh, that he gets out there and forcefully defends himself and will forcefully defend this White House. But again, this whole thing was at odds with the current power structure in the White House. I'm told that Reince Priebus and Steve Bannon were not apprised uh, of this. And the president does this a lot, that he'll meet with somebody who he likes and say, hey, do you want this job, without telling anybody else about it. So he understands that there was pushback from Bannon and Priebus. Uh, and then Spicer, being aligned with Priebus, uh, didn't like it and apparently uh, has thrown in the towel again. We are waiting official word from the White House, but this all revolves around the idea that the president wanted his man in the communications director position. That man is Anthony Scaramucci. Scaramucci was not interested in going through a chain of command back to the president. He wanted to have a direct line of communication. Sean Spicer apparently did not like that idea or the idea even of Scaramucci being installed in that position. And uh, so now apparently he has tendered his resignation. We hope to find out officially from the White House very soon. There was a big meeting going on in the press secretary's office just a short time ago. We were all ushered out of that area, uh, but we should be brought in soon to learn what the finer points of uh, all of this were. But what a Friday morning, Harris. Oh, absolutely. You know, I picked up on what you said, though. This is kind of, you know, art of the deal style. Of course, you don't tell anybody what you're about to do with regard to someone who's going to be uh, the person in charge of the messaging coming out of the White House when you know you've been anemic in that area for months and months. I have a big question, though. So you talk about who steps up into Sean Spicer's role. Sarah Huckabee Sanders has been doing that uh, when he is not in that role as White House press secretary. What do you know about her experience and what's being said from the White House about her experience, that they might look to her to step into that role, effectively becoming Anthony Scaramucci's boss. If he didn't want Sean Spicer, is Sarah Huckabee Sanders somebody that he would be considering well, here's, here's, comfortable to be with? Uh, all right, let's just let's straighten out the, uh, the workflow here at the White House, first of all, Harris. Uh, the communications director does not report to the press secretary. In, in the hierarchy that has existed up until now, uh, at White Houses, previous White Houses, the communications director reports directly to the president. The press secretary reports directly to the president. They are parallel and pretty much co-equal, though in some cases the communications director is seen to be the senior member. For example, during the Bush administration, when Dan Bartlett was the communications director, he was uh, seen to be uh, the senior 
over the press secretary because he was working on issues uh, of broader strategic communications throughout the administration and was not the person out there uh, at the daily press briefing. That said, the communications director does go on camera from time to time, particularly on the Sunday shows or when there was very big news or something that deals really with intimate issues concerning the president. So whoever becomes the press secretary, and it could be Sarah Huckabee Sanders because the president really likes her, thinks she has a very good presentation, thinks that she deals with the uh, press well, or it could be somebody else entirely. Mm. Uh, Scaramucci will report directly to the president and will not report to the press secretary. So, uh, but that's still an open question as to who is going to fill that role on a full-time uh, full basis. Hey, John, it's Sandra Smith. Uh, so what do you know about, you, you said Ryan's Priebus and Steve Bannon did not know about this beforehand. Right. Based on that, do you know if they've been I mean, are they are they going to be pushing back on this? Obviously, we know that Ryan's Priebus it's too late. and Anthony too late Scaramucci now. don't it's have good relations in the past. Yeah, uh, it's too late now. It's a done deal. And uh, without giving away too many secrets, I'm told that there was a lot of pushback on this last night. Uh, Scaramucci went in there this morning to this meeting at the invitation of the president. And the president hires who the president wants to hire. And he clearly was hired over the objections of some of the other senior staff which uh, could set up some more palace intrigue going forward. I mean, we hear stories, and i got to be perfectly candid with you on this. We hear stories of how everything is wonderful at the White House and everybody's getting along. Right. You talk to people who are in the know about these things, it's a running gun battle with fixed bayonets at times. All of these competing interests and these competing <laughs> fiefdoms uh, inside the White House. So this really kind of adds another one, you know, that the, the line between Reince Priebus and Sean Spicer was a tight one. It was born over years of camaraderie at the Republican National Committee. Now that uh, now that uh, Scaramucci is going to be in there, apparently, again, this has to be fully confirmed and officially confirmed by the White House, because until it's out there on paper, anything can happen. Uh, this will create potentially another point of conflict. But it's no question that the president has not been happy with the communication shop. He wants somebody in there who he thinks is going to fight tooth and nail for him. Scaramucci has proven that. He has the trust of the president. And so he's going to be the one that survives this first battle. And we'll see about battles going forward. Uh, uh, John, this is Melissa Francis. I mean, tell us even a little bit more about that. What does it mean for Ryan Spreenibus? What does it mean for Steve Bannon? I mean, these these are the battle lines, the people that were there first who are more mm -hmm. Washington establishment or Republican establishment versus the new folks who came in and were sort of thrown overboard, a lot of people felt, when the administration then won and moved on to Washington. There were some people who said, hey, what about the people that were there from the beginning that believed in the president when no one else did and when the rest of the party didn't? And, you know, what does it mean for them? So, so tell us more about how this displaces or what it says about what's to come for those other folks. Well, you talk about people who believed in the president before anybody else did. You need to count Scaramucci among them. He just was not part of the party establishment. You know, he, he came from Wall Street. He ran Skybridge Capital. He was also a contributor for the Fox Business Network, was on mornings with Maria as a regular fixture every day. But he was always there at the president's side. During the transition, he was shepherding through some of the very high profile uh, people who were coming in to be interviewed for jobs, David Petraeus um, among them. So to say that he's a, a newcomer to the Trump organization is not exactly accurate because he has been there for a long, long time. You, you could suggest that people like Reince Priebus and even Steve Bannon are relative newcomers to the scene. Uh, Bannon was brought on uh, in the summertime of last year. Scaramucci had known the president quite well a long time before that. Uh, Reince Priebus and the RNC were playing a very neutral role before he became uh, uh, the chief of staff here at the White House. And don't forget, too, the jobs are different. you got the communications director, you have the press secretary. They tend to work together. Bannon is the chief strategist. He's in a different orbit. And Reince Priebus is the chief of staff, another different orbit. So there are all these orbits. They do intersect. And it's at those points of intersection where often you have friction. 
and that will be in those senior staff meetings. All right. John Roberts, thank you very much. We are now going to go to the anchor of Fox News Sunday, Chris Wallace. Chris, thank you for joining us here on Outnumbered. You know, a lot was going on last night. That Washington Post report that came out that the president was considering what he might be doing to fight back against the, uh, the man in charge of the Russia investigation at the FBI, Robert Mueller. There were reports per the Washington Post that he was looking at who he could pardon, including himself. And now this talk about Sean Spicer leaving as White House press secretary. Is there anything in any of this that you think we should be looking at as, well, maybe it was a one, two, three or not connected? Well, I, I, the only way I think they're connected is that there's a tremendous disarray in the White House, uh, both on policy and on communications. And of course, the whole point of communications is to advance policy. Uh, and one of the continuing frustrations in the White House has been that when they, I mean, think of it, this was supposed to be Made in America week. This was supposed to be a week <laughs> in which point. the president made a, a number of appearances. You know, he put on uh, hats made in America and he got in a fire truck made in America and all of that. Well, how many people even remember that? Because we've been talking about so many other things. And, you know, a perfect example uh, is the president had what I think by all accounts was a very successful lunch uh, with the senators on Wednesday, you can arrange a very successful lunch meeting with the vast majority of the 52 senators uh, to talk about health care. And, you know, we've been promising this for seven years. We've got to stay in. We've got to work on it. And he went straight from there to the Oval Office to meet with three New York Times reporters to spend 50 minutes talking to them, uh, supposedly on where the administration is six months in. And it ended up turning into uh, uh, all about the Russia investigation and bashing uh, Jeff Sessions and setting red lines for Bob Mueller. And, you know, that's the continuing frustration in this White House is that if they set a plan, we're going to talk about this this week, it never stays there. And oftentimes mm. they step on and divert their own message, uh, which obviously has created tremendous frustration for people in the communications staff like Sean Spicer. Chris, it's Trisha Regan here. And uh, yes, it was clearly a really bad week for him. Uh, but now you get Anthony Scaramucci coming in. And as you point out, formerly at FBN, uh, well known to many on Wall Street. But he's not someone who's had a tremendous amount of background in the communication strategy space. My question to you is, does that matter at this point? Or are his relationships and his commitment to the president enough? I, I think it matters a lot. I mean, I think there are two aspects to the job. One is having the trust and confidence of the president. That's enormously important, especially with this president, as we've seen just in the last 24, 36 hours with Jeff Sessions, who was very close to the president and seems to have lost a lot of the confidence of the president because of his recusal and the public flogging that happened <laughs> in The New York Times as a result of that. Scaramucci, at least for now, is in solid with the president. As John was suggesting, he's a, he's a tough guy. He is fast on his feet. He's an able defender of the president. I hope he'll come on Fox News Sunday this week. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so in that sense, he's, he's, he's good. Uh, the, the, I think you raise a very legitimate question, though, which is what are his qualifications when it comes, one, for, to communication strategy, mm -hmm. which is a lot more than just punching back on a, on a cable TV show, and two, what are his qualifications when it comes to uh, communication strategy in advancing legislation in Washington, which is a very different thing. I don't know, uh, you know, and, and frankly, I don't know the, the answer to this question, but how close are his ties to people on Capitol Hill? Uh, Paul Ryan to, uh, to Mitch McConnell, uh, and in terms of working in concert with the Republican infrastructure, in the end, you know, what's the point of communication strategy? Yes, part of it is defending mm -hmm. the president, but part of it is also advancing the agenda, and that's a real skill. Uh, we've seen good communications directors. We've seen bad communications directors. And now for the last, what, almost two months, we've had no communications director in the White House since Mike Dubke quit. Uh, and, and I think that there's been some drift, whether if Scaramucci can get it under control, more power to him. But I think that's a legitimate question to ask. All right. White, uh, Sean Spicer, uh, White House press secretary, has resigned. We're getting uh, we're getting pictures now coming out of the White House. Look at this. This is reporters trying to get anything they can as this story breaks. Uh, Chris Wallace, you're still with us. Um, this is this is a story that 
even caught Reince Priebus and Steve Bannon uh, by surprise. We're told that uh, the president did not inform them that he was making this decision about Sean Spicer. So you're getting a look at reporters getting anything they can at the White House, uh, trying to get reaction to this story. You know, Chris, it, this is catching a lot of people off guard. And, and I just have to ask you very simply, what message is this sending uh, as we wrap up a week that you just mentioned was supposed to be uh, make, made in America week for the president, it has taken a dramatic turn. Well, I, I think what it shows is something we kind of knew already, but it's being reinforced again, which is this is Donald Trump's White House and he's going to run it this way. I mean, you're talking about the chief of staff, uh, Reince Priebus. You know, that there's a <laughs> part of being the chief of staff. You're in charge of the staff. And obviously the president always is, but in a day-to-day -day sense, you're in charge of the staff. So here is the president going over his chief of staff, basically saying, look, if it's a choice between you and Scaramucci, I'm going to go with Scaramucci. <laughs> In addition, the relationship, and I know John Roberts talked about this, between Priebus and Spicer was really close. Uh, Priebus brought Spicer in with him. Uh, Spicer was Priebus's spokesman at the Republican National Committee. Uh, so they were, that, made, uh, that was Priebus's man at the podium. Uh, and for the president to basically say, no, I want my guy as communications director, even if that means Freebus, or rather Spicer is going to leave, is a real statement. And it, it certainly weakens Freebus's position inside uh, the White House. I, I will say Spicer, it seems to me from his point of view, may be, uh, it, you know, it may be uh, mercy for him, merciful for him to leave this White House. I mean, he really has suffered a lot of indignities. It's been no secret that uh, the president has watched Spicer, has been unhappy with Spicer uh, in his briefings. Uh, as time went on, you saw Spicer, first of all, the briefings went off camera, then uh, Spicer did fewer and fewer of the off-camera briefings, audio only, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders did more and more, plus the whole Melissa McCarthy uh, spoofs on SNL. Uh, the, you know, they say sometimes people don't get paid enough. I, I wonder if Spicer might be uh, feel like he stopped hitting his head against a wall when he leaves the White House here. Steve has a question. Hi, Chris. It's Steve Hilton here. Um, I just, it seems to me that this, this story is just another manifestation of a, of, a, of a bigger thing, which is that President Trump was elected last year as a populist, very different to the traditional Republicans with their agenda. And it feels to me as if he's never really had around him a group of people really united and not just supportive of him personally, but who really understand and buy into that populist agenda. And I just wonder whether this might be the sign of him really trying to implement that and that you might see more moves like this. I'm thinking in particular of people like Corey Lewandowski, who I think is in that category of people who really understand why President Trump was elected and support that agenda. Do you think you might see more people like that coming back in to the White House around the president so he, he at least has a united loyal team around him? Well, that may happen. You've got to remember, this is the president's team. These are the people he appointed. And, you know, there was no surprise people knew about the, 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 the various power centers. And, and John is right. There is a Game of Thrones quality to this White House. I mean, you do have various uh, power centers that are colliding with each other, whether it's Steve Bannon and not so much him anymore, uh, Reince Priebus, Jared Kushner, uh, the 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 kind of harder nationalist group, like people like Peter Navarro in trade, or Stephen Miller in speeches, uh, Gary Cohn and Mnuchin, who are more globalists uh, when it comes to economic policy. So to a certain degree, this has been the, the, the team that the president has wanted, and he's known that there have been divisions amongst it. And, you know, yes, you can talk about wanting to put a more united team in there and more, and I think it's a good legitimate point, a more populist team. The question, though, is can they, in the end, it's all about policy mm. and, and being able to get things through in Congress. And yes, there, he, this was a populist wave that may have helped elect Donald Trump, but there was no populist wave on Capitol Hill. And you still have to deal with the entrenched uh, Republican power structure on Capitol Hill, people like Paul Ryan, like Mitch McConnell. And I'm not sure if you put uh, the Scaramucci and Lewandowski's of the world that they're going to have any better luck